With the Afghan presidential election over, U.S. troops, along with much of the world, turned their attention to the U.S. presidential election. In the world's eye, 2004 was a difficult year for the United States and its post-911 foreign policy. Cultural differences between the predominantly Christian society in America and the Muslim people of both Afghanistan and Iraq would cause further friction in the world press. Allegations and then evidence of widespread prisoner abuse in both countries also came to light, diminishing anything good the U.S.-led coalition was accomplishing. And in the end, it all overshadowed the successful security plan that allowed elections in Afghanistan to take place. In the weeks after the election, the American offensive strategy employed all year didn't slow down, even though the area of land it controlled shifted with the summer's erratic change of events. While the coalition gained ground in regards to trust, the process was very difficult. On this patrol, members of the 29th Infantry Division are looking for those responsible for firing on another patrol across the valley. No one in this village has seen or heard a thing. But as the soldiers were getting ready to leave, a villager stepped up and said he had information on Al-Qaeda members hiding nearby. Because the man feared for his life, he asked that the soldiers make it look like they were arresting him. Yet another example of the fine balance the foreign troops face here in Afghanistan. To understand just how fluid the military situation is here, and how few troops are operating in Afghanistan, a return visit to Fab Ghazni six months later may provide some idea. The Fab, started less than a year before, was finally beginning to look like a permanent base. That wasn't the only change. Strength-wise, instead of a full reinforced battalion of regular army troops here, Virginia National Guard troops with less than half the strength now occupy the FOB. Instead of having several outlying fire bases, the soldiers now operate from the main FOB itself, conducting patrols that could last for more than a week, making presence patrols throughout the province far less frequent than just a few months before. Commanders say the lack of resources they get are justifiable as they're needed in more dangerous areas of the country. The world intervention into Afghanistan should be far from over. There's just so much to do here. After having spent more than seven months in Afghanistan, Perhaps no one other experience exemplifies my feeling about its future than this one. It just happened to be my very last embed. While the Americans worked to put together and distribute gifts of aid in celebration of the Muslim holy time of Eid, a scene unfolded that's indicative of how fragile the country seems to be. Men and women, most in burqas, patiently wait for the soldiers to give out the aid. Consistent with Afghan culture, the men and women stay separated. Inconsistent with Afghan culture, but meant as a gesture of respect, women are given the front of the line, as they would in most Western countries. While things started well, within 10 minutes, young men and boys started to pilfer goods from the sides of the tent. The situation quickly deteriorated as the outnumbered soldiers can only try to fend off the onslaught. The attempts are futile as desperation and self-preservation overtake the crowd. 
What just minutes ago was peace and harmony during a religious time of atonement has quickly turned into a battle of the fittest. This country is shattered to its very core, both physically and mentally. Afghanistan is a country in need of a chance, a chance that will require a lot of patience. If there's one thing the Afghans seem to fear the most, it's not the Taliban, it's not the Americans, and it's not the drugs. What the Afghans seem to fear the most is that the world will leave them before the work is done, before the country can stand on its own two feet again. It's a situation that most everyone here agrees we once again steer these people back down a road of misery, chaos, and war. Let's go, let's go.